Behind an offense hitting everything in sight, the White Sox posted seven straight wins on their eight-game road trip. But in the finale last evening, a Boston knuckleballer left our hitters swinging in the wind, putting an end to the win streak. And looking to start another one tonight, the Sox are back on home soil with a New York state of mind as they welcome Mark Teixeira and the Yankees. She is the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Javi Garcia, Melky Cabrera, and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Joe Girardi's New York Yankees. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ken Harrelson with Steve Stone as we get set to bring you the first of this Big set right here coming off that seven and one road trip against the New York Yankees. The Yankees in first place by six games. And, you know, our Sox have enjoyed uh, resurgent July in every aspect of the game. They certainly have done that. And let's take a look at some of the numbers. You'll see why the Sox are right in the middle of the wild card race. They're 16 and nine in July runs per game up to four and a quarter batting average of 273. That's a radical departure from where it was. 80 extra base hits. The ERA has been below three and they've kept the opponent's batting average to 230. The resurgence is led by Jose Abreu who's hitting the ball out of the ballpark. In fact he's hitting just about everything. Hitting 375 during his 10 game hitting streak. He's hit three home runs. He's driven in 13. He's had at least six double digit hitting streaks and this being right in the middle of one of them. So he had a big Boston. He's had a very big month, and hopefully Jose can keep it going, and the offense can keep on doing what they've been doing. Well, tonight's pitching matchup, we got a couple of real hard throwers, some flamethrowers out there. Carlos Rodon going to the mound for us, and Carlos last time out was absolutely brilliant. This might have been as good as he's looked all year. He just stifled the Indians. Not that they have a great hitting team, but they got some pretty good hitters. He went six and two-thirds. He didn't walk anybody, which was just great. He fan nine, gave up only five hits. And the young man is starting to figure it out. On the other side of the equation, Nathan Ivaldi, he's a flame-throwing right-hander. You can see what he's done in the last five starts. He's 3-0 with an ERA of 276. And this is a guy that has a good splitter and a good changeup to go with that 97-98, maybe at times 99-mile-an-hour fastball. This should be a dandy tonight because the Yankees are awfully good. The Sox are aspiring to be awfully good. And let's see if they can take advantage of the home turf. Well, country music night kicks off this six-game homestand, so sit back, relax, and strap it down because White Sox baseball coming your way.
White Sox baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to Country Music Night at U.S. Cellular Field. It's a gorgeous night for baseball. 81 degrees as the Yankees are in town. And let's take a look at how Joe Girardi is going to line up the Bronx Bombers tonight. Kobe Ellsbury leading it off with Chris Young in the two spot. He's just torched left-hand pitchers this year. Then it's Alex Rodriguez, the D.H., Mark Desher, Carlos Beltran, Chase Headley, John Ryan Murphy behind the plate, Brendan Ryan at second base, and D.E. Gregorius is at shortstop. The defense, and now they'll line up behind young Carlos Rodon, Melky Cabrera, Adam Eaton, and Abasiel Garcia left to right. With Tyler Saladino, Alexei Ramirez, Carlos Sanchez, and Jose Abreu at first base. Giovanni Soto gets a nod behind the plate, and our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Carlos Rodon. 4 and 3 this year, his ERA just a touch over 4 with 83 strikeouts and 77 innings. He does have overwhelming stuff, and last time against the Indians, he struck out nine, didn't walk anybody in six and a third innings. The umpires for the game tonight, the crew chief, Larry Vanover is behind the plate, Ron Culp is at first, Adam Hamari is at second, and Brian Knight is at third. So Robin, very happy with the offense, actually pretty happy with the defense and the pitching on the road trip that yielded a seven and one trip away from U.S. Cellular. Now the Sox have got to see if they can dominate their home turf coming in just 24 and 22 here in Chicago. So they've thrown the ball around the infield which means we're ready to play baseball and I'm ready to turn it over to my play by play partner Ken Harrelson. All right Steve thank you and once again good evening everyone and welcome to White Sox baseball right here over Comcast Sportsnet. So if you could join us for game one of this three game set, game one of the six game homestand. Jacoby Ellsbury, 31 year old center fielder, gets set to lead it off against our 22 year old southpaw Carlos Rodon. And first pitch of the ball game, taken for a strike. Sox were two and five last year against these Yankees. Is there's a strike on the count? But they went two. Outfield slightly to the left, spaced out about equidistant. Lays off that slider. Yankees come in hitting at 258 as a club with a 3.96 ERA. They have 137 home runs. And the skipper Joe Girardi has done a great job this year. Joe Girardi has. Got him. Joe Girardi has turned into one of the better managers in the game. Period. There's a look at Joe started his career with. Then the Florida Marlins. Won the manager of the year. But lost his job. I think it was probably Joe just getting a little upset and parting ways with the Marlins. Yeah, unfortunately, it was not a great way to start it off, but he's landed in a great spot and he's still rated one of the top guys around. Former Sox farm man, Chris Young. Chris hitting at 263, 12 homers, 33 driven in. Dead fastball hitter and he loves the ball down. Larry Vanover says strike. And here at the ballpark, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. Got that good slider over the outside corner. Young gave up on it. It snapped over for a strike. He gone. That is a. Deep pitch right there. 
after the soft slider, he went to the hard slider. The difference, the soft slider at 83, he just tries to grab a strike. Then the put away slider at 89, down and in to the right hand hitter, and he had no chance. So here's Alex, the DH, hitting at 278, 24 homers, 60 driven in at the age of 40, and he looks absolutely terrific. Jumps all over that one and in the gap. So he'll pick up his 15th two bagger. Alex went up there with a plan. He was going to swing at the first ball fastball, regardless of where it was. This was 95, it was down. But when you're looking for a first ball fastball, if it's hittable, you might as well go after it. And I'm sure. In pregame meetings, he realized that the young man he was facing has a devastating slider. He just didn't let him get to it. Well, there's a difference in looking first ball fastball, and there's a difference in zoning in first ball fastball. If you're looking for it, that's different than zoning. If you're looking for it, it didn't have to be exactly perfect. If you're zoning, it has to be in that zone. As to Shara, hitting at 263, 26 homers, 67 knocked in. 35 year old first baseman has been really crippled up the last few years. Ball gets away, so Rodriguez in the third. That's most likely going to be the fourth wild pitch of the year. That slider bites down and in way off the plate. Sure did a good job of. Not getting hit with this one. Al feel straight up. And a two old pitch. Carlos Beltran on deck. To share a much better left hand hitter than a right hand hitter, plus most of his power comes from the left side. <laughs> Beltran, very similar, a better left hand hitter than a right hand hitter. He's only hitting 224 as a righty. Two. Of his eight home runs have come as a right hand hitter, and there you look at the numbers overall. Beltran, when he was healthy, in Kansas City, one of the best players in the game. He could do it all. Very quickly, nothing in two, the count. This is where Gio, if he's going to call for a slider down and out of the zone, he's going to make sure that he gets down there and blocks whatever he throws. Now, a lot of guys will use that face high fastball in this situation. Let's see what Gio wants. Let's see the hard high, slow, low. And there was a roller and just ripped. So it is quickly one nothing Yankees. Second double of the inning, RBI number 33, and that slider didn't get inside quite as far as Carlos would have liked it. In fact, it was down and out over the plate. That was a mistake by the youngster, and it cost him against a veteran and very good hitting Yankee team. And just like that, Don Cooper's going to come out to have a word with him. He's going to talk to him about the 0-2 pitch, and exactly what Gio wanted to do with it. If it's pitcher error, there's not much you can do, but the thought process he's trying to explain to him, he had to be there. So three switch hitters in a row. The Sheriff, Beltran, and Headley.
Arod started this with two out and nobody on. First pitch double. Then the walk to Tashira and the double by Beltran. Headley at 279, homers 42 driven in. Takes first pitch strike. Headley, a 265 career hitter. With runners in scoring position, he's been pretty good at 305. Six hits in the last 11 at bats. That's been real good. Hadley, who drove in 115 runs in 2012 with the Padres, that led the league. Pops him up. Jose's got to play. He's got the ball, and that'll retire the side. But they do come up with a run, and after having a play, it's the Yankees one and the good guys coming to bat. In Reynolds, Illinois. And let's take a look at how Robin's going to line up our socks for the game tonight. Adam Eaton leading it off. He's been very hot lately. And then Tyler Saladino, who at U.S. Cellular Field has been ripping it up. Jose Abreu on a 10 game hitting streak. Melky Cabrera, Abiseo Garcia, Adam LaRoche, Alexi Ramirez, Giovanni Soto behind the plate, and Carlos Sanchez hitting ninth and playing second. The defense, and out they'll line up behind Nathan Ivaldi. It's Young, Ellsbury, and Beltran in the outfield with Headley, Gregorius, Ryan, and Tashir in the infield. John Ryan Murphy behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Nathan Ivaldi. He's 10 and 2, his ERA 427. He started out this year getting a whole lot of runs from his offense. Then had a lull, and now he's thrown the ball real well last time out. He took it into the ninth inning. He is a flamethrower. He'll start this game throwing in the high 90s. And it doesn't matter when he exits, he'll still be throwing in the high 90s. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. Is that pitch at 99 down low? So the Aggie, Texas A&M, out of Alvin, Texas. That fastball by Nathan Evaldi to Adam Eaton registered at 99 on the fast pitch gun. Brought to you by Xfinity, the fastest Wi-Fi at home and on the go. Adam looks back at Larry Vanover asking him if they don't blame him. If the first one was a ball. How about that last one. I don't blame him one bit.
And I'm hitting at 288. Three, check that. 263, nine homers. 25 knocked in. Sox hitting at 248 as a club with a 3.85 ERA. Baldy has a straight change and a splitter, both of them given to him by the pitching coach, Larry Rothschild. Made him a much better pitcher. That one at 98. First of three against these Yankees. Sox 24 and 22 here at home. Yankees 27 and 27 on the road. Another. You're looking at one of the hardest throwing pitchers in all of baseball, and by the numbers, the hardest throwing pitcher. 96.2 average fastball velocity with a minimum of 70 innings. Cider guard Kelly, Richards, and Cole following it up. And there is. Here's a break. Ball four. That one was a break. So lead off man aboard, and that'll bring up Saladino. There's a one time Cub pitching coach, a one time manager, Larry Rothschild, who's been with Joe Girardi for quite some time. Tyler at 265, a couple of homers, six knocked in. Breaking ball off the plate. Murphy's a pretty good catcher. He's not their everyday catcher. That's McCann. Murphy's got a chance to become a good one. I know the Yankees like him. Murphy just 24 years old. But he's going to watch Brian McCann catch a lot of games if he stays on this club. They paid a lot of money for McCann, who is a very tough left-hand hitter and a big run producer. He's he's good. Brian McCann yes, he is. is good. Did he get it out of the way? Or did he foul tip? Ivaldi wants to know. Now they want to. I don't think he tipped the ball. Looks like it just popped out of Murphy's glove. He did not. So it's ball two. Two and oh the count. Abreu you on deck. Adam eight for 12 and stolen bases. Made a good pitch on the 2 0 -oh count with that slider. Nice crowd on hand. Expecting nice crowds. On this homestand. And the count three and one don't help him out. Cavaldi was originally drafted by the Dodgers. That was back in 2008. Wended his way to Miami. Then acquired by the Yankees for David Phelps and Martin Prado. Garrett Jones also coming from Miami to New York. Full count. Ivaldi, a real big guy and the norm of pitching today. He's 6 2, 2 15. Robin believes that Tyler can make some contact. He's going to send Adam Eaton. Just a decent lead. 
He does not go. He's got some big arm, not as big as one of the alumni of his high school in Alvin, Texas, and of course that was Nolan Ryan. Once again, the payoff. There he goes this time. Here we go. Strike him out. And he's safe. Ryan tried a re tag after missing him on the initial throw. It was not a good throw by Murphy. Not a great jump as Adam looks back. Tough ball to throw a slider down and the throw is on the third base side and Ryan tries to come around hoping that if Adam came off the bag he would keep the glove on him. But Adam did not come off the bag. Well there's an the bat right there for Saladino but he's got to understand. And don't let it bother him. He cannot let that that 2 0 pitch slider on the outside corner 3 2 pitch slider down and away. He just cannot let that bother him. Oh, and you got a guy throws 99. You're not expecting a slider 2032. Strike at the bottom of the zone. Bray on that 10 game hitting streak. He's at 295, 17 homers, 59 driven in. Very quick to the count, nothing in two with Melky Cabrera on deck. He did not play at Texas A&M, but he committed to go there before signing with the Dodgers. So, in essence, he still got some Aggie blood in him. And here's the one-two. So, with two out, let's check out our picks to click. Your man Joe, our director of the crew, went with Alexi. Steve's going with Giovanni and Terry Hanley, Mike Williams, Roger Clare, Eric Aldrich, and I. We're going to go with Adam LaRoche. Cabrera, 282, six homers, 48 knocked in. And a high strike. Sox have been hitting the ball out of the park recently, and Evaldi has been keeping it in the park recently. He hasn't allowed a home run in his last eight games. Well, if he keeps getting those 2 0, 3 2 sliders over, you're not going to have much home runs off of him. No, and the last one he gave up was June 16th. Chris Heston has the longest active streak with 11 games without giving up a home run. It's tough to keep it in the park these days, especially when it gets as hot as it is here. Over. It's a facing of the Yankee dugout. Got him. That went at 97. See, Murphy wants it up. Givaldi gets it not only up, but in. Get through. No, took that. Nice. 
Cantini bounce right there. And that'll retire the side. After one is one nothing New York. Former White Sox legendary pitcher passed away at the age of 88 this morning. Billy was just a wonderful man. Spent 46 years raising money to fight cancer for Chicago baseball's charity, and ironically, it was cancer that eventually took his life. That statue you're looking at was erected in 2005. Billy was not only a great pitcher for the White Sox, but he was a wonderful man. I spent a great deal of time with him. He's just a kind gentleman who had a great feeling for baseball and the people who have surrounded themselves with the game for a lifetime. And looking at the achievements, 18 seasons, seven-time All-Star, led the American League in strikeouts in 53 and ERA in 55 and wins in 1957. Franchise record, almost 1,800 strikeouts. His number retired by the Sox in 87. And as you can see, the sculpture we showed you erected in 2005. So... Condolences to the Pierce family. Murphy, Ryan, and Gregorius. And a screw into center field. Murphy came in hitting close to 280 and takes this first ball fastball. Although Carlos took a little something off, he was able to ease it by Ramirez at shortstop. Alexi hasn't been missing much lately, but that one just out of his reach. Here's Brendan Ryan, the second baseman, hitting at 276. Brendan, a career 234 hitter. Now feels straight up as he takes first pitch strike. Fake the bunt. It would appear that the Hall of Famer Raleigh Fingers is trying to petition to get his mustache back. Ryan's got a dandy. It's a handlebar mustache. You don't see many of them these days. That is foul. And a count nothing in two. He's coming into that mark of 57 and 44, 13 games over, six games in first in the East. Good pitch, didn't get it. Didn't get the call. And now two on nobody out. Ryan now seven for 15 against left handers. Hasn't had a chance to play all that much, but just makes some contact, turns into gold, and DD Gregorius will probably be looking to lay it down. 
25 year old shortstop hitting at 259, five homers and 28 driven in. So that's how a pitch can really, one missed pitch can really affect the ball game. Runners in close. Takes the bunt, takes the strike. resides and Corsa. Nice That's a good fun. That's a good bunt now. Ducks on the pine one out. Gregorius who came over from the Diamondbacks. Pretty solid player. Excellent defensive shortstop. And not having a bad year swinging the bat, laid down a perfect butt, his third sacrifice of the year. So here is Jacoby Ellsbury. He grounded out three to one, leading off the ball game. Saladino in at the cut of the grass the third base. Ellsbury still with very good speed. He got a cookie right there missed it one and one the count. Jacoby as I mentioned hitting at 288. 14 for 20 in stolen bases. He can go get them in center field. 2011, Kobe Ellsbury found a whole lot of power at 32 home runs. Since then, he's hit a total of 32 home runs. But with runners in scoring position, you see pretty tough at 324. Got a piece of Soto, so Larry Vanover is going to take a little time. One out. And on second, third, one and two, the count. Carlos could certainly use a strikeout here. Send to center field. It's going to get nobody home. Let's look at that throw. Murphy. A little bit of a fake. And meanwhile, two down. Time now for ATT Universe Multiview.
You see the tag and then he decides to go back as Adam. Gets it most of the way in. Certainly good enough where a catcher who doesn't have great speed wouldn't be all that adventuresome. Well no not so many teams going to run on our outfield. Any of them. So here's Young stuck out on the slider. And takes first pitch slider. All of our guys can throw and all of our guys are very accurate. Gio Abani made sure that one didn't get through the wickets. After five up in Canada, Toronto and Kansas City tied at three. Cueto on the bump. That one missed. Two and one. You just as soon put this inning to bed with Young, who's not near as damaging as A Rod, who's in the on deck circle. That was a nice. Piece of shifting right there by Jill. And a three one. Oh, yeah. Good change up. Good motion. Full count. This is a pitch that Carlos has been working on the one that will take him from a very good young pitcher to perhaps a great pitcher is harnessing that straight change consistently. And a payoff pitch. And that was another straight change only this one was inside so. A rod does indeed come to the plate. If you're just turning in with two out nobody on in the first inning. he. Had First ball fastball into the gap in left center for his 15th double. Then the walk to Teixeira. Beltran with a double and he scored. So another jam. He had a jam in the first and he's in a jam here in the second. Those numbers you're looking at for Alex Rodriguez are pretty good numbers for anybody, but especially for a 40 year old. Yeah, you got to go back to that. Ryan at bat where he had him struck out, didn't get the call. He got a single after Murphy had single. And that started off this predicament. That's up the middle. Look at the stop by Sanchez, but it's going to get a run across. He got hurt. He's hurt now. May have pulled something on that stretch. Looked to me like either the left shoulder. As he rolled over it, he did save a run. It's RBI number 61. It's a two to nothing game, but a lot of concern for Carlos Sanchez. Right there is when he landed. It looked like, looked like, it's the shoulder. Skids and lands right on the shoulder there. And as well as he's played, you just have to hope that he landed awkwardly and he'll be fine. So the bases remain loaded, and it's a two-nothing Yankee lead. Says he's okay. And here comes Teixeira, who walked. Her with the bases loaded. Just wonderful for Mark Teixeira. 338 with nine grand slams. 
That slider stays outside. He's got nine. A Rod's got 24. So 33 grand slams between us as the count evens at one. That ball hit deep in the center field. Very deep. And that pitch that they had Ryan struck out on has come back and bit us right in the behind. They would have had no runs now. Now they have six. One pitch like that can change the game. 70 run driven in, 71 runs driven in by Teixeira. Our Ford home run replay is a 10th grand slam, and this is a hanging slider. He just reaches out and takes it over the center field wall. His 27th home run. Burns my behind, I'll tell you that. One pitch changed the game. Beltran, RBI double. Two doubles and two innings for Beltran. Five hits this inning, five runs this inning. And here comes Don Cooper. Country and Western night, and that young man. Might not have a lot of cattle, but he's got a big hat. That'll bring up Chase Headley. Headley fouled out to end the first inning. Six, seven, and zero oh for the Yankees. No runs, no hits, no errors for us. Best thing about it, though, is that it's just in the top of the second. Yankees came in fourth in the league in hitting behind Detroit, Kansas City, and Toronto, and they're showing it here tonight. Three and one. That's pitch number thirty one this inning. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game brought to you by Miller Light. So here's Murphy. He started it off with a base hit. Next 
first pitch strike. Matt Elmer is loosening up in the pen. That change up. 52 pitches so far in an inning and two thirds. Bottom of the fifth in Baltimore, 6 4 Detroit. Kansas City now has taken a 5 3 lead over Toronto. That game in the top of the sixth. Gil made a good stop once again as that one almost went to the screen. Full count. John Ryan Murphy. Here go the run. Well, that went up Vanover, so Murphy stays alive. And once again, the three two. Will be pitch number 59. And Murphy continues to bat. That's the ninth pitch of the at bat. Gio was telling Carlos to stay on the mound and get the ball back into him. Wants him to get some rhythm. Pitch number 12. Well, Beltran and Headley getting their workout. Mark Parent, the bench coach, looking out at a pretty tough inning for Carlos. They come up with a five spot. We'll go to the bottom of the second. It is six nothing, New York.
Garcia, LaRoche, and Ramirez to face Ivaldi. Ivaldi has the second best run support in the major leagues. They have given him this year seven runs a game. He has six here in an inning and a half. But that happens. Just like Quintana. Only he's on the other side of the page. <laughs> One and two the count. I'll be at 268, seven homers, 33 knocked in. And the pitch goes to two and two. That was a slider that Ivaldi threw so effectively in the first inning because he could get it over the plate. The shade Abbey toward right center field with the gap in left center for him. <laughs> Three strikeouts now. <laughs> Cover all the bases for just $79 by purchasing an Abreu four pack. Each pack includes four upper box game tickets, four hot dog value meals, and a parking pass. Abreu four packs are available now for all remaining Monday through Thursday games. Visit whitesocks.com slash Abreu to order yours today. Here's Adam. Adam at 210, nine homers, 35 knocked down. Ellsbury. Two down. This kind of visibility before the lights really take over. It's not all that easy to see the spin on the ball. Moldy taking advantage of that, throwing a lot of sliders. And with that splitter to go with it, which he really didn't have until Larry Rothschild got a hold of him. Straight change and the splitter really has turned his career around. Here's Alexei. The 233, five homers, 35 driven in. Takes that fastball at 100 miles an hour. Off the end of the bat, up the middle. Gregorio, didn't find the ears, and that'll be a base hit, so you can cancel a post game show. Gregorius has big range. You can see it here, but he couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Alexei just too fast to not beat that one. And that'll bring up Soto. Gio has faced Ivaldi twice. He's 0 for 2. He comes in hitting at 248, seven homers, 18 knocked in. Between Gio and Tyler Flowers, 14 homers and 45 driven in. That's in the dirt. Got these guys again tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. Tomorrow. John Danks for us to be announced for them. Then on Sunday, it'll be Jeff Samarja against Ivan Nova. Tomorrow's game will be right here on Comcast Sportsnet, and Sunday's will be over WGN as you look at Samarja. Not even a two. That was a straight change at 88 miles an hour. That's better than a lot of pitchers' fastballs. But when you can throw a hundred, 
12 mile disparity on the change is pretty good. Now one at 90. And it'll retire the side. That's his fourth strikeout, and he leads it 6 0. and Ole Miss Daily reports from training camp every night on Sports Talk Live and Sportsnet Central. And stay on top of the latest developments 24-7 on CSNChicago.com. Chicago Bears Training Camp 2015 presented by ABT Electronics, Apt Electronics, and more. Country and Western night and Carlton Fisk as the Lone Star had on. Want to know the count to Ryan. <laughs> Seattle shutting out Minnesota 3 0. That's in the bottom of the fourth at Target Field. Baltimore trying to come back. It is now 6 5 Detroit, top of the sixth at Oriole Park. That's right. Count evens at two. Cubs up at Milwaukee. Bottom of the third, tied at one with the Brew Crew. He gone. That was a good straight change. He nipped off the outside corner. This is a chance for still a very young pitcher to see if he can eat up some innings, keep Robin out of the bullpen, and hopefully turn it over to what has been a pretty hot offense heading into this game. Here's Gregorius. Had a sacrifice, a nice sacrifice bunt. 5 3. That is Sir Didi Gregorius as he was. United by the Netherlands government. Really? That's another souvenir. 
So the count hangs at one and two. Boston has taken a fourth e for the four three lead over Tampa Bay. That's in the top of the sixth inning. Yes. Fouls that back. Matt Harvey and the Mets shutting out Washington one nothing. Top of the seventh in New York. Tyler. Two down. On Saturday, August 15th, come see the White Sox take on the Cubs at 6:10. All fans are invited to stay for a post-game fireworks show presented by Magellan Corporation. Purchase tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866 Sox Game. Nice night for the concession stands. Here's Ellsbury. Good pitch. Didn't get that one. Ellsbury 0 for 2. Ellis would love to go 1, 2, 3 and have a relatively easy inning as he's up to 75 pitches. Ball count to the 31 year old veteran. He gone. Slider. Four strikeouts. We'll go to the bottom of the third. It is 6 0. Bad guy. Pepsi. All members of the Hispanic community, their families and friends can buy specially priced tickets at whitesocks.com slash orgulo. 
We got to get some runs. We trail six nothing. If you're just turning in, they scored one in the first. Then with some help by a missed call from home plate umpire, they scored five in the second. So Sanchez will lead it off. He had his 12 game hitting streak snapped last night in Boston. Nathan Evaldi. Was that one over at 98? Want to send out a big White Sox. Hello. And with love and a happy birthday. To Julie Bixler, who was 93 years young yesterday. She is ahead of three generations of die hard Sox fans. Julie, happy birthday, honey. That's out of play and count over to and also congratulations to Jordan Pinsky and his little league team the Vernon Hills 12 view who won the Lakeshore feed championship. Jordan, grandson of Jay Pinsky of our White Sox family. Didi. Boy, that was quick. Good play by. Good play by Gregorius. Gregorius is a terrific shortstop. That was never the problem. The only question for DD coming up was would he hit in the major leagues? He started with Cincinnati and then went to the Diamondbacks and came over to New York. They love his defense. And he gets it over there on the button after charging it aggressively. Well, here's Adam. He walked, picked up stolen base in the bottom of the first inning. There's a strike. Yankees have had their pitching problems, especially in starting rotation. Michael Pineda was just disabled. And a lot of people felt that they would pull off. A big deal at the trade deadline. And there's a chopper over the head. And there he goes. Here's the throw. He's safe. Double number 16 and a nine game hitting streak. There was a time when you didn't really want to run on Carlos Beltran. These days, the arm is okay. It's not really a great right fielder's arm in this one. On a ball down, right over the head of Teixeira. And going away from the play, Adam sees him going to his left and realizing he can't make the shift in time to get off a good throw, so he runs it into a two base hit. Well, you could run on him if you wanted to, but <laughs> it's like much. that old saying you don't really need a parachute to skydive. The only time you need a parachute if you want to skydive twice. <laughs> Here is Saladino. Struck out. This guy made two good pitches on 2 0 slider on the corner, 3 2 slider on the corner. So you just got to put that in the past. On. One and one to count. Check, good take, and a count two and one. This guy's got a four plus ERA. So 
Well, one of the reasons is we that should be able to get to him. His fastball is pretty straight. It is very fast, but doesn't have a whole lot of movement to it. That's one of the reasons why he's given up so many hits. Coming into this game, in 111 and two thirds, he had given up 135 hits. And a guy with this kind of stuff that we've seen—the velocity, the arm strength, and the slider. He wouldn't give up that many hits if he had any kind of late movement on that fastball. Over the top, low throw. Chatham will move into third after the throw. That's two out. Mark Teixeira, one of the better glove men at first base in all of baseball. And if you're just turning in, Mark hit that grand slam home run in the second. That was that was his 390th career home run. He passed Johnny Bench and tied Greg Nettles for 59th all time. Puff, Greg Nettles, what a third baseman he was. Wow. So here is Brayu. Greg Nettles, for a lot of you too young to remember, was one of the best third basemen. Ever in this game. And just to show you how things can happen, he played with me at Cleveland. He couldn't catch anything. And he just worked and worked and worked and made himself a great third baseman and a great fastball hitter. That's off the plate. So the count one and one to Abreu. To share playing in his 95th game, and to tell you how good that glove still is, he's only made two errors all year long. Well, he's been one of the best in the business defensively for a long time. And he's having a resurgent offensive year. Chops that one foul on count one and two. In an effort to shore up their starting rotation, they're going to call up one of their top prospects. We're not going to see him in this series. He's going to pitch against the Red Sox. His name is Luis Severino. He's got a big power arm. And the Yankees figure he's going to move right into the starting rotation without a great deal of difficulty. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch, they go back, they look up. You can put it on the board. Yes! And we're right back in this way, going 6 2. Eleven game hitting streak for Jose who's found the long ball magic his 18th home run he's now driven in 60 runs a Ford home run replay even though it's 99 it's up and out over the plate we told you about the straight fastball and this is a no doubt line drive home run. That's breaking ball driven. strike. Uh, take that ball to Cabrera. Melky grounded out to short. Of course, with that home run by Abreu, Alex Nellius family will hook up with White Sox Charities and Christine O'Reilly, who does such a wonderful job with White Sox Charities in loving memory of Ursula. Jose has a home run in three of the last four games and four of the last eight. There's a strike in the count two and one. That one at 98. That takes a nice bounce right there. Brendan Ryan. That'll retire the side, but not before. Two run shot. And a 6 2 Yankees.
Uh, the first 10,000 fans will receive a White Sox rally towel presented by United Airlines. United, proud to fly the Chicago White Sox. Purchase tickets today by visiting WhiteSox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. To run homework, pops the field by Abreu, which is right back in it. Anytime you're in Grand Slam range, you're right back in it. So here is Chris Young as he takes first pitch strike. I mentioned that home run back to Shera, the Grand Slam, his 390th, passing Johnny Bench and Greg Nettles. Johnny Bench, for you youngsters out there, have been in this professional baseball 56 years. Johnny Bench, the greatest catcher that I have ever seen. And if he had not had a misdiagnosis of a problem they thought he had, it checks that one up, had a situation that they had to operate, they cut his chest open and cut muscles in there. Johnny Bench certainly, in my opinion, would have gone over 500 home runs. Plus, he had. The best arm I've ever seen on a catcher. I played against Yogi, but Yogi was on his way out at that time. Yogi, a three time MVP in the American League, Yogi Berra with the Yankees. Two two pitch. Gio tried his best to. Bring it back over the inside corner, but Larry Vanover wasn't buying it. Outfield bunched a bit straight up. That's it. Deep. And over the head. Didn't get a real good read on it. So the leadoff double. Toughest ball to judge is the line drive right at you if you're a center fielder. And Adam cut across to start with and then couldn't catch up with it. So, not a particularly good route to the ball, and it cost him a two base hit. That brings up a man who's done some damage tonight. Alex doubled on the first pitch he saw in the first inning, came around to score, and he had an infield single back to the middle, knocking in a run. That is back to the backstop. Looks like it'll be ruled a wild pitch. That one in the dirt, well in front of the plate. This one just skips by Geo. Tough pitch to handle as it's inside. And so Young winds up third with nobody out, bringing the infield in at all four positions. Uh, no. So there's one of the two that we just picked up in a 7 2. Geo setting up inside. This one is low and away. It hits the dirt. Usually, when a major league catcher sets up inside and a pitcher misses his spot by Three feet or so, they usually give a wild pitch on the play. So Young scores easily. That's a five run deficit. They had a piece of the corner at the top of the zone. And here comes Robin. He's I think he's seen enough. He's going to make the call to the bullpen. Carlos having some problems tonight. Gave up one in the first. Got a bad break in the second with a missed call, third strike, or else he may have gotten out of it with no runs. Meanwhile, that's not the case. He departs. Matt Alberts comes on. Alberts comes on, and we'll be back.
from a Data Strong fan, and you just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Our Honda call to the pen is Matt Albers. Albers has been pretty good this year. His fastball is moving all over, sinking most of the time. He's on for the ninth time. He's 1 0, ERA 138. Just eight hits in 13 innings, and as you can see, opponents hitting 178, which is a pretty good number. So he inherits Alex Rodriguez at first base. Nobody out here in the top of the fourth. It's a 7 2 Yankee lead. Teixeira, a walk, and his ninth grand slam. In the second inning, a hanging slider goes out of the ballpark with the 400 mark just to the right of center field. Make that 10 career Grand Slams. So Alex at first base with 24. They have 34 between them. Throw in 11 for Beltran. They have 45 between, <laughs> between the three of them. 45 Grand Slams. That catches inside corner. Matt pitched two innings last night in relief of Chris Sale. Gave up a run on a hit. The walk and a couple of strikeouts. Full count. From the left side, especially, Mark Teixeira has always been a dead pull hitter, and it's reflected in the shift the Sox have on him, although Sanchez is not back on the grass. He's still on the dirt part with three guys on the right side. That's high and deep in the center field. It's 9 2. He's now homer from both sides of the plate. He's driven in six on his two home runs. 28 and 73 on the power numbers for Mark Teixeira. A Ford home run replay, and this one is thigh high into a left hander that is a pretty good pitch to hit. Towering home run, and it's a seven run lead. Beltran, two for two, two doubles. Just taking advantage of the shift. This is a little ground ball there for the base hit. Still nobody out with three in. They scored one in the first, five in the second, three here so far in the fourth. We scored two on the two run homer by Abreu last inning. An idea what a resurgent year it is for Teixeira. Last year he had 216. He appeared in 123 games, 22 home runs. He only drove in 62. He's already flown by those numbers and he's got a long way to go in this season. And there's the base hit. So hitting contagion. Headley with his first hit of the night takes that off speed pitch and drives it through the right side. 
So the Yankees who got in very late last night from Texas got to the hotel around four o'clock or so. Not feeling any ill effects of it tonight. Murphy takes first pitch strike. Triano looks like Matt might be feeling the effects of a couple of innings at work last night. Stuff not near as crisp here tonight. Our boys got in around two o'clock this morning. There's ball four from Boston. And Don Cooper is calling the pen to get somebody up. Here's Ryan. He's one for two. This is the same Yankee team that put 21 on the Rangers in Arlington. And you get a pretty good idea how they did it. There's Mark Teixeira, who's homer from both sides of the plate. Brian McCann next to him. And then CC Sabathia, the big left hander, who's not having a particularly good year. Good pitch, didn't get it. Again. Very similar to the pitch that he had him struck out on. Rodon had him struck out on back in the second inning. He does. They don't score. Meanwhile, they scored five. It's Dan Jennings loosening in the pen. Big gap out there in right center. Baltimore now has taken the lead over Detroit, eight to six. Toronto has tied up Kansas City at six. That game in the top of the eighth in Canada. Now they're going to hold Beltran. Second hit of the night. First run driven in for Ryan, who's got seven as he drives it through the left side. So the hit parade continues as the Yankees do indeed have their hitting clothes on. One in the first, five in the second, three so far here in the fourth. Still nobody out. Headley at third, Murphy at second, Ryan at first. It's ten to two. And with nobody out, and the base is still full of Yankees. That is problematic. Scoreboard will eventually catch up to that last run they scored. So, Gregorius has sacrificed bunt and a grounder to third. Put it up on the board now. 
10 12 and 0 for them 2 3 and 0 for us. Yankees have been on a whole lot tonight. The ball hit hard right at him. So it is 11 to 2. Gregorius with his 29th RBI. Sacrifice fly, the third of the year for Gregorius, who has three sacrifice bunts and three sacrifice flies. So the ninth man to come to the plate here in the fourth. Ellsbury. He's 0 for 3. Grounded out 3 to 1, lined out for 7. Struck out, called out on a slider. I wonder if about at least that moon out there. That is a beautiful sight out in the area of the scoreboard. That scoreboard is not a beautiful sight. Thank you very much. Everything in this game is contagious. We saw that on our road trip. We missed that. We were on an eight game road trip, started off four in Cleveland. We had Bauer, Kluber, Carrasco, and Salazar, and we swept the Indians. Got him. Two down. This one came back and bought a piece of the inside corner. So Ellsbury not joining a whole lot of offense tonight as he's 0 for 4 and everybody else seems to be hitting the ball pretty well. And then we left Cleveland and went to Boston for four. First three games just ripped the ball. Took the first three and then Chris Sale hit the bump. We we're uh, hopefully expecting another sweep to make it eight for eight. But the Red Sox last night got some good pitches to hit and didn't miss them. They won that ball game eight to two. Stephen Wright, a knuckleballer, beat us. Only runs we got with a two run homer by Abreu. So Rodriguez to share Beltran seven for seven. Third, fourth, and fifth place hitters. Seven for seven, eight RBIs, and seven runs scored in this game. Count hands at one and two. Chris Young started this inning off with a double. Went to third on a wild pitch and scored on a wild pitch. It's just the fourth inning, and the Yankees have batted around in two of them. That's the fair ball. Beautiful play. Nice shift. Beautiful play by both ends. But. 
Another crooked number goes up there, five spot. It is 11 2, New York. Price fees at checkout. That's right. On StubHub, the price you see is the price you pay. StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of WhiteSox.com. Toronto and Kansas City tied at six in that game. Donaldson, Josh Donaldson, two for three, three RBIs. Those three RBIs, he now has 72 RBIs on the season. And they added Troy Tulowitzki to a lineup that was already devastating. Of course, David Price won't hurt him. Well, they were very active at the break, as was Houston. At the deadline, the trade deadline, which ended today at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Javi Garcia. That was a strike, not called. Two and zero. Oh. Well, we told you that Nathan Ivaldi, second most run production in his starts this year in the major leagues. And it's going to go up a little higher. He might just take over that top spot. When you come in 10 and 2 with a 4.27, you know somebody's getting some runs for you. Ate him up right through the shove. It. So one out. This fastball is right down the middle. And Avi, who hustles on every play, regardless of the score, regardless of the situation, makes it real close at first base. But Ryan, a lifetime shortstop, now platooning at second base, gets it over in time. And I'm not particularly happy as he has a couple of words with Larry Vanover about the height of that slider. Blue Jays also added Ben Revere. Revere having himself a heck of a year. Home base percentage is way up there, so they'll probably put him in one hole. Move Tula Whiskey down with that powerful, dangerous two, three, four, five, six. Boy, that is maybe the most dangerous, not the best hitting, but the most dangerous lineup I've ever seen. So 
Alex Anthopoulos, the GM. Been busy, a busy boy. That ball hit hard in the center field. Stretch, stretch. Get over his head. No. Yeah. It is. It's a double. So. Ellsbury should have had that one. He'd probably tell you that. He ran it down. It is going to be a two base hit, but Jacoby was there. Well, Adam LaRoche last night in Boston had three real good at bats. So hopefully there was a couple of days he set out giving him a little bit of an understanding that it's just not as tough as he was making it on himself. May have helped him. Here's Alexei. He's one for three. He had an infield single. That was our first hit back in the second inning. Pop up right side. Let's play it. Teixeira. Two down. If Mark Teixeira has a chance to catch it, he's going to catch it. And even though this is probably an easier play for Ryan, Teixeira went back and he called for it. In fact, they both called for it, but Teixeira was able to make the catch. Gio struck out his first trip. Yeah, if you put Ben Rivera at the top, then you go with Donaldson, Batista, and Canacion, Tula Whiskey, Russell Martin. That's pretty heavy. Good rip underneath it. That double by. Adam is 16th. Terry Hanley. And the boys pick the click. That breaking ball. 11 12 and 0 for them, 2 4 and 0 for us here in the bottom of the fourth inning in the first of this three game set and the first of this. Six game homestand. Three with these guys and three with Tampa Bay. Toronto came into action tonight just 52 and 51, trailing New York by six games. They were in a tie with Baltimore for second place. Tampa Bay right there, seven games back, so. Baltimore made a couple of deals at the deadline, but not many teams help themselves like the Blue Jays. Another good rep by Jill. Ball hit sharply. Gregorius throws him out, and that'll retire the side. We're into the fifth. We got a long way to go.
Jennings on for the 29th time. He's one and three. His ERA a touch below six. He also got a little work in Boston. So he comes into this just to try to restore some order. We're only in the fifth inning. And it's a nine run Yankee lead. Here's Alex. Alex, two for two, a walk, three runs scored. Now has 61 RBIs. Now, like I say, 299 career hitter with 678 home runs. What a player. Former number one pick in the country for the Seattle Mariners. And Griffey worked out pretty well for the Mariners also as the first pick in the country. I remember doing a game out in Seattle. Wimpy was my partner, Tom Petrori. Griffey was in center, Alex was in shortstop. We're talking about Griffey, and we both agreed that there might be a guy playing in front of him that might wind up a better player offensively than Griffey, who was a tremendous offensive player and defensive player. And it was Alex Rodriguez. Outfield around to the right, gap out there in left center. Some of the highlights this year he hit home run number 661 on May 7th, his 2000th run batted in on May 13th, 3000th hit on June 19th, excuse me, June 13th for the RBI. A three home run game on July 25th. It's been quite a year. After sitting out a year for A Rod. <laughs> Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light, and it's our Miller Moments. It's a big night for Mark Deshera. Grand slam from the right side. This is coming in the second inning. He turns around from the left side. And it's a two run over in the fourth inning. Fourth innings, the Yankees batted around. Our Miller moments. Wynn has been blowing straight out to center field. Twenty eight homers. 73 RBIs now. And the count 2 0. Oh. Now Gio wants to have a little chit chat. Yankees have hit 139 home runs. So this is very much a power ball club in a park, at least for most right handers, that isn't a power park. Two and one to count. Home runs by switch hitters. Four and five in the batting order, pretty good. Mark Teixeira with 391 home runs. Carlos Beltran, 381 home runs. They are fourth and fifth on the all time list. Three and one. Fourteenth time he's homer from both sides of the plate. And that is a 
major league record. Out of Georgia Tech. And surprisingly, he was tied with former White Sox and current Indians hitter Nick Swisher. With the all time lead, now Deshera has it by himself. They are not holding Alex on in. Here's the payoff pitch. Yanks that one foul. There's part of that very powerful four and five switch hitting duo. Carlos Beltran. Ate him up on the fist. Little shank. Seventh pitch of the at bat, and he tried to heat him inside. Just barely able to stay alive. Well, that swing right there by the sheriff. He has been a guy who could hit with short arms throughout his career. That's one reason he has hit so many home runs. He's been able to take inside pitches, hit them hard, keep them fair. Double. Second so to hold Alex. Third ducks on the pond, and again nobody out. Twenty-second two bagger for Teixeira. This pitch is low and out over the plate, and that's going to bring Don Cooper out. As Mark Teixeira rifles it into the corner. Well, the Yankees continue to pound the ball. They're in the top of the 10th inning now in Toronto, tied at six. Beltran, two doubles, a single, one RBI, and a run scored. And the bullpen up and going one more time. It's Daniel Webb throwing in the pen. Three switch hitters to Sheriff Beltran and Headley. Seven for eight in this game. With seven RBIs. Four runs scored. Going off, off his foot. foot. And the count one and two. Sure, that one didn't feel too good. Uh, 
Beltran, 38 years old. Yankees have never let age hold them back from signing free agents. He gone. One out. Good slider, low and out of the zone. Nice pick by Gio. And for the first time tonight, Beltran is retired. Headley's one for two. Fouled out to Abreu to end the first inning. He walked in the second. Singled and scored last inning. Breaking ball, close pitch, and he didn't get it. One ball, one strike, one out. And there's a base hit. Shows that one in the right field. They're going to score. Alex. And that's 12 2. Headley over the last month has really taken advantage of the left handers. His on base percentage very close to 500. When a lefty takes them out. And he continues with that high fastball. Just dumps it into right field, and the hit parade continues. So here is John Ryan Murphy, the catcher. He's one for two. Single run scored, strike out, and a walk. Right to the bag. Yeah. Back him up. And that'll be trying to say, we're halfway home. And we're in deep trouble. The White Sox earlier. 
Billy Pierce was a great ambassador after being a great pitcher for the White Sox. I face Billy Pierce. St. Petersburg, Florida, spring training. He threw me that big curveball and grabbed some bench hawk. He was something. As Sanchez will lead it off here in the bottom of the fifth. Fouls that back. Carlos for one grounded out to Gregorius. And there is number 19, Billy Pierce. He's got a statue here at the ballpark commemorating his wonderful career. That ball hit pretty well on the left field. Get over his head. It will. Thank you very much. So that will be his 14th two bagger and run his. He had his. 12 game streak stopped last the snap last night starts another one. This one well hit and young is playing very shallow for him. No he didn't read it Carlos has two home runs this year. Here's Eaton a walk, a double, a run scored, also picked up a stolen base. That was in the first inning. His ninth stolen base of the season. And 13 attempts. That's not a strike. And it was called one. In fact, that wasn't even close. Last 14 games, Adam with a 5.23 on base percentage. Well, we talked about Adam with 300 last year. In spring training and early in the season, it was going to be Adam and Melky Cabrera at the one and two spot, and we figured they would be the table setters for the big boys in the middle. Well, he didn't start out all that well, but. He sure is heating it up these days. Another souvenir. Adam was absolutely robbed as he hit it to the wrong guy, Mark Teixeira. One of the best defensively in the business. And this is a one hop rocket. Keeps the glove down until the very last instant, and that's really the key. If the glove comes up, you can't go down with it. If the glove stays down, you can always come up with it, and Teixeira did it perfectly. So here's Saladino with a chance to pick up a, an RBI. He's 0 for 2, a strikeout, and a ground out to third. Breaking ball strike. Seems like he saved his best sliders for Tyler. One and one to count. Game two tomorrow night. They have not announced their pitcher. Be Johnny Danks for us. And that game right back here on Comcast Sportsnet. Finale on Sunday. Jeff Samarja against Ivan Nova in that game over WGN. Gap out there in left center. It was off the plate. 
Big crowd on hand tonight. It's going to be a very well attended series. Big crowds expected tomorrow and Sunday. Two down. Celebrate Mr. White Sox Mini Minoso with a commemorative number nine lapel pin. A limited number of pins are available with all proceeds benefiting Chicago White Sox charities. For more information, visit whitesox.com slash auction. One account. Got him off speed out in front. Two out of one to the count. And here's what he did back in the third inning. That beating the board. 18th home run of the year for Evaldi. He's only given up nine of them. And now 116 innings of work. So he keeps the ball in the ballpark, but not against the big man. So Zay's starting to heat it up in the power department. Good block. Well, I'm Good not block sure. right there by Murphy. <laughs> I'm not sure how he was able to stop that one as Ivaldi just steered it right into the ground. At Kansas City, Toronto game now in the top of the 11th inning. Talking about the Yankees and can Toronto improving themselves. Toronto plays the Yankees 13 times in August and September. And there's ball four. So he walked out of meeting to start off the ball game for us. That's his second walk. And here's Melky. Melky has grounded to short and grounded to second. Takes first pitch strike. That was a good pitch. Givaldi didn't get it. Melky's been another red hot hitter. Got a chance to drive in at least one. Gary Tuck, who's the bullpen catcher, catcher for the Yankees, in talking about Murphy, calls him Little Joe, meaning Little Joe Girardi. Joe was a very smart catcher and a good catcher. Murphy's got the same attributes. He's not an overpoweringly big man, but he understands pitching. He understands how to work it. He understands how to work hitters. He's probably going to be a pretty good catcher. Two and two the count. 
Capaldi a little happy with himself as he missed down. And there's a look at one of the real good ones in baseball, Joe Girardi, one of the real nice guys in baseball. There's a shot pass hit down by Malkin. Sanchez is going to score. I'll bring you on the way to third. That's the 12 free ball game. Now be at number 49. This is a changeup. It's down and out over the plate. And Melky's been swinging a red hot bat. Well, this is one of those situations when you're losing at that point in that at bat 12 to 2. Now it's 12 to 3. When you're losing like that, you want to take the mindset of going up there and going for yourself. Going for yourself. Just try it. To get some base hits, put that average up a couple of points, try to get an RBI. As here is Avi. And let the chips fall where they may. It's not what you'd call a situational hitting scenario. Avi struck out and grounded to second. All speed and out in front. That fastball at 96. 17 of his 33 RBIs this year have come with two outs. Two on, two out, two balls, two strikes, one in. 12, 14, and 0 for them, 3, 6, and 0 for us. 100 pitches. Not through the fifth yet. And after Avi fouled it off, Adam LaRoche also fouled it off. And he's in the on deck circle. Skipping stone on a pine. It's our dugout and just skips over. So. Spectators. Full count with two down. Ball into right center field. But the RBI single by Melky Cabrera knocks in Carlos Sanchez, who's led it off with a double. We're into the six, trailing big.
Sox content all year long, including news and video updates, ticket offers, breaking alerts, and more. Visit whitesox.com backslash blacklist to register today. Country music night at the ballpark. Maddie and Tay performed on the field before the game. And everybody having a good time, including the youngsters. You can't beat a hot dog at the ballpark. That young lady is finding out. Brian will lead it off. He's two for three with an RBI. Brendan Ryan. Here's the one strike pitch. Bottom of the 11th in Toronto, tied to six in Kansas City. Bryant came up with St. Louis, eventually going to Seattle. Now found his way to New York in his eighth year in the major league. That ball hit into right center field and over the head of Adam Eaton. Is pretty lively tonight as Ryan hits his ball hard and Adam has to run it down. That's hit number three for Ryan. That wind still blowing straight out to center. 30,359. As here is Gregorius, the shortstop. He's 0 for 1 with a sacrifice, but a sacrifice fly. As promised earlier in the game, we've selected the Data Strong Fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag Chicago Data Strong Fan. You just might see yourself on an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. And that is a strong photograph. Here's Ellsbury. He is 0 for 4 in his hitting contagion for the Yankees tonight. He had 12 runs on 15 hits. We have three runs on six hits. Eight extra base hits. Six doubles, two homers. Looks like Toronto just did in Kansas City. I wonder who it was. Bottom of the 11th. Man on, one out. They elected to pitch to Donaldson instead of putting him on. There was a man on first. Donnie Cueto pitched okay in his Royals debut, not overwhelming. Yes, he did. So one and two. Brian Knight said he went around, and seemingly he did, as Gio wants the appeal. Good pitch, and he did not get that one. He's been all over the place today. 
And Gio turns around and has a few words for Larry Vanover. That's a beautiful pitch. He's missed a lot of pitches tonight. A lot of pitches. <laughs> Dan Jennings wants to know where it's at. And Gio's going to tell him it's a strike and he missed it. Not much you can tell a pitcher in this situation except keep your composure. Missed a big one back in the second inning. I know that. Good guy out of that inning with no runs. And Brendan Ryan struck out. They went on and scored five. There he got a cookie and couldn't do anything with it. Well, that one off as it hung inside. Josh Donaldson knocked in. Troy Tulowitzki. Bottom of the 11th. And that young man made a nice catch. Brought his glove, leaned over the dugout, and he's got a souvenir. That's going to fall. He had him struck out. And another one crosses the plate. Six runs they scored the night after we had a guy struck out. Can't get it. Chris. One for three. A couple of runs scored at a double. Yay. Oh and two. Yes, he did. He rings him up. He gone. Two down. So here's Alex. He scored four runs tonight. He was two for two, a double, a single, two walks. Baltimore has come back and defeated Detroit eight to seven. Toronto beat Kansas City at seven to six. Seattle leading Minnesota. No, they beat Minnesota six to one at Target Field. Oakland leading Cleveland, so Central taking a hurting tonight. Since we're getting beat thirteen to three. That's good. Gap out there in left center. Two and one. After six up in Milwaukee, Cubs leading the Brew Crew 3 1. Ah. 
Two and two. Donaldson now four RBIs tonight, giving him 73 on the season. Hitting at 295. Whiskey went two for six, scored a couple runs, one being the winner. Toronto now 53 and 51, Baltimore 52 and 50. Both teams helping themselves, but nobody helped themselves more than Toronto in pursuit of that wild card or perhaps the division championship if they get really hot. That is three walks oh. in a row for Aaron. Teixeira has three base hits in a row. He walked in the first, grand slam homer in the second, two run homer in the fourth, and a double in the fifth. Daniel Webb throwing one more time in the pen. It's a humid night. He should be very loose. In that Baltimore game, Adam Jones, three for five, three RBIs. Adam with his 17th homer. Machado hit his 22nd. Chris Davis, two for four, with an RBI. Parade is two for four, a couple of runs scored. He's hitting 291. So they can put some points on the board. One and two. That's going to be a good race. And the East. Two balls, two strikes. Down at Houston, 4 4 tie with the D backs. St. Louis shutting out Colorado 7 0. Top of the 11th in New York, a 1 1 tie with Washington. Boston beat Tampa Bay seven to five to Zawa over McGee. O'Hara his 23rd save. Texas beat San Francisco six three. Martinez over Bumgarner. That series in New York a big one because Washington only three games ahead of the New York Mets. The Mets did a whole lot to help themselves at the trade deadline. Washington. Well they made a trade or two. But I would say the Mets did a little better and. This a huge series for them. Full count. This will be the 277th total pitch in this ball game. And we are just in the top of the sixth inning. Look at the play on a rocket. <laughs> nice play by Tyler Saladino again. That young man can absolutely pick it at third.
but the wild card. The Houston Astros with Mike Fires, Carlos Gomez, and Scott Kazmir really helped themselves in the pitching department. Kansas City got Johnny Cueto and Ben Zobris. Zobris, an all-purpose player. Johnny Cueto, a good starter. The Angels got David DeJesus, David Murphy, and Shane Victorino of Texas. Cole Hamels. And a boy, another base hit for Adam Roche. Get him heated up a little bit. He's two for three, a single and a double. And the team that probably won the most productive and helped themselves the most, the Toronto Blue Jays with Latroy Hawkins, David Price, Ben Revere, and Troy Tulowitzki. And Toronto's going to be tough to contend with down the stretch with those guys. Well, Angels did themselves certainly well. With those pickups right there, because they fit into Mike Sosha's scheme of things. He's getting tired of getting these big, big long term contract players that don't produce. He's got some part time players, good pinch hitters, a stronger, much stronger bench now with those three guys. Especially if Victorino's healthy. But Toronto certainly takes the Crown for the best pickups. Ben Revere could be a huge pickup for that ball club with his home base percentage. Yankee bullpen up and going as Ivaldi has 107 pitches to this point. Alexei, one for two, had our first hit, an infield single back in the second. Ivaldi has hit 100 in this ball game. First two pitches of the game for him to Adam Eaton at 99. That is high. Ellsbury. Adam Warren loosening in the pen. The pen of the Yankees has been pretty good. Their problem has come in the starting rotation with Batances and his 132 ERA. Warren is six and five, has a lot of decisions, although he has been a part time starter. And they get Andrew Miller, who's been really good with a 180 ERA and 35 appearances. So the pen has been pretty good. Last 18 games. Not tonight so much. Last 18 games, our bullpens had a 1.71 ERA. 161 average, 49 strikeouts over the last 18 games. And that 171. Since July 7th is the third, third lowest in Major League Baseball behind San Francisco and Miami. Tourno. Giovanni. Giovanni has struck out and grounded to short. Time now for our Xfinity High Speed Action Replay. And it comes off the bat of Carlos Sanchez and a pretty good play by D.D. Gregorius getting it across in time. That's just about as fast as you can see a transfer made right there. And Larry Rothschild goes out to the mound. I'd like to get one more inning if they could out of Ivaldi. Got a 10 run lead. So what pitching coaches and managers don't like is seeing walks. <laughs> 
They can live with hits and not walks. Not with this kind of lead. So here's Sanchez. Carlos one for two. Lead off double and a run scored. Last inning. Best records in Major League Baseball. Sox 17 and 9 since June 30th, tied with Pittsburgh for the second best record behind these Yankees who are 16 and 8. That ball hit high and deep into right center field, but Ellsbury is there. So Adam will tag move into third. And here comes Girardi. Ivaldi through 116 pitches, he'll depart. And we'll be back. Adam Warren on for the 24th time. He started 14 of those. He's six and five, his ERA of 5340. Giving up 81 hits and 95 in the third inning. He's got a big overhand curveball. Left handers have not hit him very well at all. He takes over with runners at first and third and two out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Adam has walked. Doubled, then hit a rocket to first base that Teixeira made a nice pick on. Takes first pitch strike. 13 16 and 0 for them, 3 7 and 0 for us. Count one and two.
He just tuning in Yankees one in the first. They got five in the second. Didn't have to do that. Didn't have to get any in the second, as a matter of fact. Meanwhile, they got five in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth, so the second really didn't make that much difference. Now. That ball in the dirt. That's going to go as a fifth wild pitch for Warren. Gito moves into second. And the count two and two. Looked like a slider. Murphy has some problems with it. And now a base hit scores a pair. Full count. Saladino on deck. If Adam can reach. Got him. And we'll go to the seventh. Trailing by ten. Every weekday morning on the Captain Hall Show. It's Chicago's favorite call in sports talk TV show. Plus, plus the biggest interviews and the hottest topics on the teams that you care about. It's the Captain Hall Show presented by Horwitz, Horwitz and Associates. That's weekday mornings at 9 on CSN Chicago. Got a new pitcher, Daniel Webb, coming on. Webb in the place of Jennings. And Daniel on for the 16th time. He's 1 0, a fine ERA of 147. The thing I like about Daniel this year is that, like the other night in Boston, pitched himself into a jam and then pitched himself out of the jam. Last year had trouble doing that. He got in jams, but he couldn't pitch himself out. He's getting that slider over the plate, and that's really been a big factor. Although he still has the 10 walks and 18 in the third, he's had much better control overall this year. Here's Beltran. Excuse me, Dustin Ackley is hitting for Beltran, who was three for four. And it's a clean shaven, Dustin Ackley. If you're going to play in that Yankee uniform, you are not going to have a beard. For the first time in two years, he does not have a beard. Well, here's a young man that yeah, Carlos has got it. Tyler Saladino at first. Luyori Garcia at short. Gordon Beckham at third. Jamie Shuck at left. But 
Ackley's a young man who has been an enigma. A lot of people said coming out of college that he was the greatest college hitter in history. Hadn't shown that, but he still he still can do it. He is not too old. So here's Chase Headley. He's two for three. Two singles. Run scored and an RBI. <laughs> I would take it himself. Two down. Not a whole lot of difference for Tyler, except he's got a bigger glove at first base. So he's got a smile on his face as he makes a very good play. Well, to go from one side of the infield to the other is just not as easy as it seems because of the spin on the ball. Top of those hands, and he's got very good hands. Spin on the ball at third base is going to your right side. Spin on the ball at first base is going to your left side. Especially on pop ups. Is there's a shot by Murphy. That's his second hit. Here's Brendan Ryan. He's three for four tonight. Two singles, a double, two runs scored, and an RBI. So the Simon Legree lookalike. With that mustache. Take strike one. Philadelphia beat Atlanta 9 to 3 at Citizens Bank Ballpark. Watch Come out. Slowed it up a little bit, maybe. And that'll retire the side. Seventh inning stretch, 13 3.
And Dustin Ackley will stay in the game and play left field. And she'll stay in the first row with a t-shirt. So here's Saladino to lead it off for us. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Made two good plays, one in particular at third base. 13, 17, and 0 for them, 3, 7, and 0 for us. Talking about pitching. Our starters. Our starters this year. Well, first of all, since 2003, our Sox are second in the major leagues, nine behind the Mets, and quality starts at 1,119. And this year, we're tied for the American League lead in starts with 60 quality starts, including 13 in the last 21 games. That's, that's fouled away. Jose Quintana is tied for first with 16 quality starts. Chris Sale is tied for fourth with 15. And this year, when we get a quality start from our starter, in 60 games, we are 42 and 18. One of the best pitchers in the game right there. And if you look at his record, that's where numbers and baseball can be so misleading. One and two the count. There's a shot base hit. First hit of the night for Tyler, and he figures as long as he's going to move to first base, which is a slugging position, especially on this team, might as well hit the ball hard, which he did. Then you go on the other side of that sheet with Nathan Evaldi, who has a tremendous arm. There's no question about that. But he's going to be. After this game, 11 and 2 with a 4 plus ERA, and his team is averaging over seven runs a game for him. Beckham fouls that back. Years past, White Sox have had some outstanding pitching. One in particular of hard luck was a guy named Joe Horland. As that's in on the fist, fouls it back. There's always somebody that's going to wear it. There for a few years, Mark Burley wore it for us. And since he's been in the White Sox uniform, Jose Quintana has been wearing it. Tied for first and quality starts. I'll tell you something. All right, Chopper. One out. That'll be J.B. Shuck coming up. One of the bright spots all year has been JB playing pretty solid wherever Robin has chosen to use it. Well, it's been an excellent pickup for Rick Hahn. He's an excellent addition to this ball club. Won his two ball games, pinch hitting, tied another one, made some good defensive plays, done everything, stole some bases, done everything that Robin has asked of him, and done it nicely. He came to spring training with. No promises. Just an invite. See if he can make the ball club. It was not a great year for him last year. He moved around somewhat, but showed in spring training that he could do a few things and he's carried it over into the season. He showed us when he was in that angel uniform that he could do a few things because he beat us a couple of ball games. Good speed, good arm. All-purpose player. That ball into the gap. That's 
going to get it through there, so Tyler's going to score. JB now, he's on his way to third. He's going to get there. And it's 13 to 4. For JB, that's run batted in number 11, and that's his first triple of the year. So he drives this ball into the gap. It's a fastball moving away. JB continues to do what he's been doing all year. Hit the ball hard. Last triple. A couple of years ago. Like say. Fouls it back. Debbie still is the young man. He just turned 28. So he's got some time, some years left, staring him in the face in the big leagues, doing what he does. One and one to count. Ivy looking for his first base hit. He's safe. 13 to 5, and this is what you want to do when you. In a route like this, is you want to finish up scoring some runs. This is a play that very few pitchers work on, and Warren never got to the plate. They might have had a shot at Chuck because the ball bounces back to Murphy, but not if Warren doesn't get to the home plate. Not even two. If you were scoring along with us and had your picks to click, JB hitting in Cabrera's spot. Melky was one for three with an RBI. That triple, that RBI and that run scored would go if you had Melky Cabrera. That would count. Anybody hits in his slot. Had a letter about that the other day. Anytime there's a substitution, it goes into your slot for your guy. Whatever he does, you get. Good or bad. JB Chuck went into the locker room. It looked like he was dealing with a cramp. And Hermie took a look at it. And so they're going to see if he can get a little hydration, see if the cramp will go away. Bobby Bertucci before the game was listening when I had my cramp yesterday in Boston. He said, It's not water. It's going to hydrate you. It's electrolytes. So I got to go see Hermie and get some electrolytes. Here's the payoff pitch. Two down. And here comes Adam. Adams two for three, a double, a single, and just missed one in the center field. Maybe this malaise that he has been in is coming to an end. Shift is on. Breaking ball strike. And the counter went two. Stacks it up on that one. And there's 
has another base hit. Terry Hanley. Mike Williams, Roger Clare, Eric Aldridge pick the click. Three for four. That is good news. This one down and out over the plate, which is exactly where Adam would have ordered it if he could. And he hits it hard. Yuri Garcia getting an opportunity. In that Met Washington game, bottom of the 12th inning, Wilmer Flores, who was traded the other day, and then that trade was canceled, Homer. Mets beat Washington 2 to 1. One and one to count to Leary. Two in, two out, one and two to count. Watch out. If you're just tuning in, Yankees won in the first, five in the second, five in the fourth, one in the fifth, one in the sixth. We scored two in the third, two run homer by Jose Abreu, one in the fifth, and two so far here in the seventh. A little soft. Fister. One hop over our dugout. And tomorrow, Johnny Danks on the bump for us. They have not announced who's going to pitch for them. And Jeff Samarjo on Sunday. And he'll be opposed by Ivan Nova. Tomorrow's game will be right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Sunday's game will be over WGN. Watch out. Just barely able to stay alive in that one. Out of the zone on our Toyota pitch tracks. Another foul ball. Nelson Cruz. It is 27th home run. Nelson went four for five, two RBIs, hit now uh, hitting at 314 for the Mariners. Yeah, hello. Got him. Put a couple across the play. We're into the eighth. Go ahead, 13 to 5.
Michael Kay on the right and Paul O'Neill on the left. They're the Yankee television team, and Paul O'Neill, of course, a great player. Michael Kay, probably the hardest working man in show business. I'm not sure he's ever off the air. Paul O'Neill, one of the best players in his time frame. He was a tremendous clutch hitter. Michael Kay has been in New York for a long time, does a terrific job. I used to love to watch O'Neill play. He could get the pinky in a hurry. He was on definitely on my all time Carmine Derriere team. He wasn't a captain. Pinello's a captain. But O'Neill might have been a co captain. Leary has shifted to left field. Saladino, he's at short. Tyler Flowers at first. Tyler looks like he's trying to play just about every position. He's on his third as Tyler Flowers takes over first base. Here's Gregorius. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt and a sacrifice fly. Giving a little salute to the bench, showing that he's very versatile. Go from behind the plate to first base. And to show you what the Yankees think of Paul O'Neill, he's got a plaque out there in Monument Park at Yankee Stadium. Turn over to Ellsbury. Boy, tradition of there. Monument Park plaques. Miller Huggins, Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio. Jacob Rupert, Edward Barrow, Joe McCarthy, Casey Stengel, Thurman Munson, and there's ball four. JB left the game with a left hamstring strain, and that's not good news. For the ball club. So here's Chris Young with one out, one on. Other monuments out there. Former teammate of mine, Elston Howard, Roger Maris, Phil Rizzuto, Billy Martin, Whitey Ford, Lefty Gomez, Bill Dickey, Yogi Berra, Ali Reynolds, Don Mattingly, Mel Allen. Great voice of the Yankees for many years. Bob Shepard, PA man, many years. Reggie Jackson, Ron Gidry, Red Ruffing, Goose Gossage, Paul O'Neill, Joe Torrey, Nelson Mandela. Got a statue up. Tina Martinez. Thought of Monument Blacks. 
0 oh, and 2 the count. Oh, check that 2 and 0. Oh. Young can't get it. He's one for four tonight with a couple of runs scored. the umpire so that's going to save extra bases if Brian Knight is able to get out of the way it's going into the corner he wasn't and it didn't hit his glove hit Beckham's glove good job by Gordon just to get some weather on it deflected it over towards Brian Knight <laughs> Here's Brian McCann. There are the numbers on Brian. He's a good player. Sixty RBIs. He'll beat you in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. Chops that one foul. Alex tonight was two for two with three walks, four runs scored, one knocked in. First of three against these guys, and first of six on this homestand. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it'll be Tampa Bay. And we'll have an off day on Thursday, then fly on down to Kansas City next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Three games set against the Royals. That is popped up, going foul. Man to count one and two. That one almost got away. He go. Two down. Follow live White Sox baseball at MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected to the White Sox all season wherever you are with the MLB.tv game of the day. You also get in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay previews, radio broadcasts, and more. Browse the app's new features, including statcast tracking videos and bilingual access for Spanish-speaking fans. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Cheryl, a walk in the first, a grand slam homer, his tenth. 
in the second. Two run homer in the fourth, a double in the fifth. Then he hit a bullet, a missile down to Saladino, who made the play on him in the sixth. Watch out. Change up, no. Three and one. And that will load them up with two out. And here's Ackley as Coop comes out of the dugout. Don's made a few trips to the mound tonight. Exactly. He's been in the play one time, grounded out to Sanchez. Takes first pitch strike. That one at 95. Time to sign. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Trailing. Bottom of the eighth inning. 13 18 and 0 for them, 5 10 and 0 for us. So here's Jill. Takes it low and away. Jill for two with a walk. 
Just looking at the schedule here. In our central division. Cleveland as we speak tied at one. Top of the eighth inning out at the Coliseum. In Oakland. We have. In our division six games left with Cleveland seven left with the Tigers nine left with Kansas City and six left with Minnesota. Is that pitch misses down low so the count two and one. Stephen Drew comes into the game to play second base. Brendan Ryan slides over to third. Well, both managers fireworks after the game. We got 30,000 plus here, so managers are giving the starters a chance to go in and shower, and especially both teams getting in very, very late. Are on the other side of the page in the wee hours of the morning last evening. We landed about. Right around two o'clock, they landed later than that. As he calls him out, and Geo Hot makes his bat. I don't blame him because he wants his pitchers to get the same pitch. A couple of pitches that we did not get really hurt us tonight. Really hurt us. So here's Sanchez. He's one for three. Picked up his 14th double. And he now is hitting 13 out of the last 14 games. His 12 game streak was broke last night in Boston. Stephen Wright, a knuckleballer, shut us down. There's a good pitch on the fist. Uh, one. Two down. So here's Adam. A walk, a double. Then he hit a rocket. To share it made a real good pick on him. And then he struck out. Also picked up the stolen bases ninth of the year. Shot off the glove. That'll be a base hit. This is another rocket, and I think Mark Tashira thought he should have had it. He goes up, gets off the glove, and Adam was robbed earlier. Winds up with his second hit. He's been on base three times to keep that amazing on base streak going over the last couple of weeks. 500 on base percentage. To share one of the best in the business with that leather down at first base, he'll tell you for sure he should have had it. Saladino one for four. Beating and swinging that bat. He was nine for eighteen in that Boston series with a homer. There's a shot, right two. Third base. Meanwhile, we're into the ninth. Turning by eight.
Sports Talk Roundtable in town on Sports Talk Live. It's a half hour of opinion, insight, and fun. That's Sports Talk Live weekdays. Comcast Sports Network. Robin Ventura was talking about the bucket list for Adam LaRoche. And one of the things he wanted to do was pitch. So, there you see his first career pitching appearance. And Robin has an opportunity to give him a chance to do something that he's always wanted to do, but hasn't had a chance to do to this point. His father was a pretty good pitcher. I did play with him, and he became a quality closer in the major leagues. So maybe Adam has got some of those genes in him. So here's Drew making his first plate appearance. Hitting at 193, 13 homers, 28 RBIs. At the top of the zone. Steven, brother of JD. As that's popped up. Carlos will make the catch for out number one. So Adam will always have Stephen Drew to remember as first man he faced and the first man he retired. So here's Murphy. John Ryan Murphy got a couple of hits. Two for four with a walk also. And that's just foul. Thank you. Reach back, put a little giddy up on that one. Do that. He got to 85 miles an hour with that fastball. And he jams Murphy. See him go to the well on that one. So here's Brendan Ryan. Three for five in this game. Scored twice. And drove in one. Flips a little curveball up there at 63. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Even Brendan Ryan is happy. I'll throw him something he's not looking for. That fastball outside at 83. Two at 84. <laughs> that one at 50.
Johnny Tanks takes the bump against these Yankees. Coverage begins at 5.30 with White Sox pregame live presented by Orland Park Toyota. Got a new pitcher coming in for the Yankees, and it's Nick Goody. Making just his second appearance of the year. After a spotless ninth by Adam LaRoche. Nick Goody comes on last night against the Rangers. He threw a third of an inning. Gordon Beckham fouls it back. Two. Nick made his major league debut last night. Be called from Triple A. This is his second stint with the Yankees. Young lady hung around late in the ball game and got a souvenir. Two and two, the count. And that's foul. To short left field, and that's going to fall for a base hit. That'll work, Gordon. <laughs> Couldn't have thrown it out there any better. Gregorius with a long run, he can't get to it. Ackley was playing way off the line, and he can't get to it. So it's a two base hit for Gordon. Tyler Flowers getting his first A.B. Two balls, no strikes. Straight back. Allocating at two eighteen, seven homes, twenty seven knocked in. 
30,359. For game one of those three games set. Big crowds tomorrow and Sunday. That's popped up right side. Young. So here is Abby. Takes first pitch strike. Goody. As they have out on the scoreboard and left center pitchers, Goody and LaRoche. Well, Chris Campton tells us that he was actually drafted by the Marlins. In 1998, but as a pitcher, but didn't sign. Outfield around to the right, and the 0-2 pitch. Johnny Danks tomorrow night against undecided for the Yankees. Checks it up. Two and two. Adam on deck. Adam, besides that scoreless top of the ninth, has three hits in this ballgame. He has swung about well, swung it well last night, getting back into action at Fenway and swung it well tonight. Getting line drives. Get yourself a knock. Get yourself an RBI, Avi. And another souvenir. Got in on the fist. Flips it over there, dug out, so it down hangs at two and two. Final for Milwaukee Cubs beat the Brooklyn four to one. Hamill. The one. St. Louis shuts up the Rockies seven to nothing. 
Waka. The winner as he gets it. Two down. So here's Adam with a big round of applause from the remaining fans in the seats. I mentioned. He had the barrel on it in the second inning when he went out to center field. Then he doubled over the head of Ellsworth. Ellsbury, I should say, in the fourth single sharply in the sixth and seventh innings. Two and the count. Final week, Kansas City, seven to six. Pass Donaldson. Winning RBI. He had three RBIs in that game. And the count two and one. Set. That's his fourth. So here comes Gordon. He's going to score. And it's 13 6. That boy, Adam. He drives in run number 36 as he takes it right back up the middle, keeping the game alive. Child out to talk to Goody. Yes, sir. If we can get Adam's bat going, but it was the rest of the offense is starting to really come together. That would be a big, big bonus. That's a career high tying four hits tonight. So here's Leori. He's been in the play one time. He's 0 for 1. Yankees bullpen up and going. Quickly two strikes to Leary. Jason Shree who's sitting up in the pen. Or Stan Bonson. Number was 45. Yes, that's foul back. Thirteen, eighteen, and zero for them. Six, thirteen, and zero for us. Toss. And they get him. And this ball game. Wait a minute. Now Robin wants to review. I don't blame him. He said, no, that's okay. 
So the ball game is over as the Yankees come in here. They score one in the first, five in the second, five in the fourth. Keep adding on, and they win it, 13 to six. And our player of the game is four for five, We're tying four hits. Adam LaRoche with a perfect one-two-three inning in relief in the ninth. So. For Steve Stone, for our director Jim Angio, it's great to have him back. Our producer Mike Leary, our associate producer Chris Campbell. Also for the mayor, Mean Joe Groove, Mike Leary, Dave Cheller. Joe Paul's back, Dean Anderson, Doug Bully. This is a Hawk song, everybody. You've been watching White Sox Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.